Hey, good day, friends. Good to see you. This is Pastor Pete at Abundant Life Church in Lakewood, Washington. It is Wednesday, the March the 22nd, 2023. I think last week I might have said it was the Ides of March on the 15th, and someone corrected me that today, the 22nd, is actually. But it could have been the 20th, for all I know. I, happy spring. How about that? It's a, it's a new day is dawning, and uh, it's Wednesday, and as we usually do, it's time for coffee with Pete. So, Grab your coffee, get your Bible open. We're going to take a look at a, a verse in 2 Timothy, the second chapter. So get that going. So uh, just as I was want to do, it just I'm reading through the Bible and reading different places. Sometimes I read because someone has a question for me or, or uh, I hear something maybe on a, another program, radio show that makes me curious. I go exploring. Um, just reading through Timothy, the letters that Paul wrote, these two books that are, or letters that are called First and Second Timothy, Paul wrote these as encouragement, instructions, and guidance to Timothy, who was uh, one of his followers, who he calls my spiritual son. He actually, Paul refers to Timothy that way. And Timothy had been deployed to the church in Ephesus to be the pastor. It's not the first place that Paul had sent him to. He had been his emissary or his messenger to other places as well. Um, but here he'd been sent to Ephesus and now he's going to be the pastor there. So Paul writes these letters to say, here's some guidance for you. Here's some things to remember, some way to act, how to conduct yourself, etc." And so I'm reading through that because it's just good, good uh, refreshing for a guy who's trying to live out a similar kind of life. Uh, at any rate, 2 Timothy 2, verse 16, kind of caught my eye. And I, I started wondering about it and meditating on it, praying about it. And it says this, and, I, and I've been commonly reading in the English Standard Version, ESV. It says, avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. Uh, what an interesting turn of phrase, irreverent babble and leading people into more and more ungodliness. And, I, and I'll give you the full context of that later, but just even this phrase itself, the way this is all, uh, you know, avoid irreverent babble, like thinking about all the kind. For me, it first started thinking of all the kinds of conversations that I get into or all of the internet or television or radio conversations, talk radio, news uh, television, all the internet stuff and all is mostly political, right? But there's also lots of other people with causes. And, and is it really reverent? Is there really, is there really a sense that there's something good happening? And then I'll couple to that hearing younger people really using language we would have once considered extremely vulgar and, and not appropriate for common usage. We, I, I still consider it that, and so do as do most of my friends. Uh, but to hear young people just very cavalierly using language that would be considered very, very foul uh, and degrading. So I really started thinking about this and praying about it. Well, one of the things that I do when I'm studying a little bit is is uh, I will go over to other translations and see see what's going on in those translations. See how do they say the same verse. So remember, ours in the ESV is avoid irreverent babble, for it, it will lead people into more and more ungodliness. The NIV, a New International Version, it says avoid godless chatter, because those who indulge in it will become more and more ungodly. Avoid that, meaning avoid those people in a sense. The New Living Translation says, avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior. Kind of seeing a theme, of course, that they should all agree, but it's amazing to see how many different ways it can be translated. Some, some passages in Scripture, you get the same translation across every single uh, version of the Bible. Not so this one. The New American Standard says, avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it, it will lead to further ungodliness. We're seeing that theme at the end of this is the ungodliness, an increasing amount of ungodliness. The Amplified, which often takes it something close to the NAS, but then really blows it up and gives a lot more information, says, avoid all irreverent babble and godless chatter with its profane, empty words, for it will lead to further ungodliness. And then finally, the King James, you know, uh, maybe some antiquated language, but sometimes it's the most clear. It says, shun profane and vain babblings, for they it will increase unto more ungodliness. And that word shun was so strong. And I thought, wow, I mean, this, this is a really important thing. And he's, 
Paul's instructing Timothy, avoid the people and the conversations with people that sound like that, because that's only going to become lead to more ungodliness. Well, you know, it's not the only time that that kind of instruction was given by uh, by Paul to Timothy. He's really concerned with telling Timothy, and he told, told him some very similar things. He told him some other things about people interactions. He's really concerned about interactions between people and how we interact with the people that we're, we're with and within the culture and the context that we're in. Because I've had jobs, for example, where I worked in a place that was very rough and tumble and the language was really raw and the, the guys were just throwing it around left and right. And I've worked in places like medical fields where you're dealing with the elderly or whatever and the language was super gentle and soft and, you know, it was much more uplifting in that in that context, believe me. I'd, so, But Paul gives Timothy some other similar um, kinds of uh, uh, of instructions. And, and he says in 1 Timothy 4, 7, which would have been before this one, the, the letter before, he says, have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. Rather, train yourself for godliness. So he's talking about there's some things that are going around and you should be really focusing on making sure that you have the full understanding of the truth. In 1 Timothy 6, 20, Paul says, Oh, Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. So he's saying to him, there's truth and you've received it and now you should guard it and make sure that you understand it so well. Train yourself in it so when you hear what doesn't agree with it, you'll know how to avoid it. Now, to the church in Ephesus, actually Paul wrote a letter to the whole church. And, uh, and there's a couple, of, uh, uh, a couple of scripture quotes I want to give you from that. From Ephesians 4.29, Paul said to the whole church, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it might give grace to those who hear. So he's talking to them and he's saying, look, how we intersect with each other and the things we say to each other is really important and you should avoid, you should stop using things that are cutting other people down. You should be graceful. You should be building them up, be edifying, it says in some translations. And then in Ephesians 5, 4, Paul says to the church, Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are all out of place. But instead, let there be thanksgiving. So really having, you know, words coming forth that demonstrate that you know God loves you and that he's provided for you. There's other places. There's hundreds of verses in the Bible that talk about the power of the tongue, the way we speak with each other, the way we represent our, each other to God and God to each other. Um, not all of them were Paul writing to the church in Ephesus. Let me just give you two examples. From Proverbs 16.28, Solomon, the author of Proverbs, says, A dishonest man spreads strife, and a whisperer separates close friends. So that whole gossipy, you know, being dishonest, half-truths, that stuff can really make a difference among relationships, especially within a close-knit group like a church or, or a small community. Um, and then finally, you might wonder, did Jesus have anything himself to say? In Matthew 12, Matthew has recorded uh, a, a lot that Jesus had to say. But Matthew 12, 36, Jesus says this. He says, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. So Jesus himself is saying, be careful. So, you know, the verses we were hearing before, the, the 2 Timothy 2 verses, it's saying, avoid the irreverent babble because it leads to more and more ungodliness. You see, the thing is, and Jesus is saying the same thing. He says, the words you speak out are demonstrating whether you are godly or ungodly. And it's, i got to tell you, it leads to more and more ungodliness. It doesn't mean necessarily that a godly person becomes ungodly. You're one or the other. There's a choice to be made here. What it means is that more and more people will be corrupted within this context of godliness and will abandon the godliness and will begin filling themselves with the ungodly. And then that's what will come out of them. We hear that in the scriptures. What's in our hearts is what comes out of our mouths. And so that's really the choice. And so... Let me give you the full context, or a little bit more context. This is, again, instructions from Paul to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, verses 14, 15, 16, and 17. 
Paul says to Timothy, remind them, remind the church of these things and charge them before God not to quarrel about words, which does no good, but only ruins the hearers. To do your best, do your very best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the, handling the word of truth. But avoid irreverent babble, for it will lead people into more and more ungodliness, and their talk will spread like gangrene. Now we're into something that's really strong and powerful. Like, what does it mean? Their talk, ungodly talk, spreads like gangrene? Here's how it works with gangrene, which, by the way, gangrene, it's a terrible thing. It, it can be caused by uh, a disease or an infection. Usually think of it as an infection that takes over in the body. What gangrene is, here's a medical definition. I have it written down here in my notes. It says, it would be the death of body tissue due to a lack of blood supply. And what happens is that inside the body, there, there begins a process of decomposing or rotting, and the dead cells are not eliminated. Now, we have body cells dying all, and regenerating all the time. New ones coming and old ones dying. But when there's so much going on because of an infection... The decomposing and the rotting from the inside, they don't; those aren't shed. And so what happens at first is that's, that decomposing and rot is not detected. It's on the inside. It's not, it's not detected until it somehow reaches the surface and there's a discoloration or when the skin is broken, then there's an odor that it emanates. And by then it's almost too late. Gangrene is so serious that it can cause amputations or, or cutting away of portions of the skin that are uh, where the body is died and it, it can actually lead to amputation and death and so he's talking about how to keep a group of people who call themselves Christians in unity and thriving and alive and he's saying this irreverent babble this ungodly talk if it's not stemmed early on if you don't avoid it early on it's just going to spread and you won't notice the death that's going on until it's too late. So friends, I just want to encourage you. Think about the people that you're with and how you talk with each other. And it's okay to ask them, to correct them, to instruct them. That I don't want to talk that way. I don't want talk to be, that kind of talk to be a part of my life. And while we may learn to tolerate each other, it's not for their good, nor the good of the entire, for that kind of ungodly, irreverent babble to be present in our lives. I pray this is an encouragement to you today. Um, and that you, you, you know, you find that God's blessings are pouring forth onto your life in, in a way like never before. I bless you, in Jesus' name. Amen.